Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Joan of Arc. Our entrance song is number 420. All are welcome, 420. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if, my, if I may ask you this favor, Please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought, that you may bathe your feet, and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food, that you may refresh yourselves, and afterward you may go on your way. The men replied, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, Quick, three measures of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender, choice steer, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set these things before the three men. And he waited on them, under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, Where is your wife, Sarah? He replied, There, in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will then have a son. The word of the Lord. Blamelessly 
his heart and slanders not with his tongue. He who does justice Approach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. He who does justice. accepts no bribe against the innocent. One who does these things shall never be disturbed. He who does justice A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister in accordance with God's stewardship given to me to bring completion for you, the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past. But now it has been manifested to his holy ones to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory it is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke.
Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This story of Mary and Martha often gets distilled down to a very simple concept. Mary's the spiritual one, so she's good. Martha is only concerned with the physical, and so that's bad. So the moral of the story is we should all be like Mary and not like Martha. People have generalized it even farther, saying that, for example, those religious communities of contemplatives are much better than those whose charism is apostolic works, like feeding the poor. Somehow they're inferior. It can't be that simple, though. It doesn't sound right. If we had no Marthas, how would we eat? That's a primary concern of mine. No, I'm just <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's consider maybe a different approach to this story then. What does Jesus actually say to Martha when she complains about Mary not helping her? He says that she is anxious and worried about many things. That's the problem. Anxiety, worry. Anxiety and worry accomplish nothing. They are the opposite of both the spiritual and the physical. When we're anxious, our minds are preoccupied with many things. It's hard to think straight or accomplish anything. Worry creates such turmoil in our minds that it is difficult to pray. So what we really need to focus on today is not so much whether the active or contemplative is better, which one is better, but focus on how are we to avoid anxiety and worry. Martha's problem. So I'll offer a few suggestions. As many of you know, it's been over five years now since I had my heart surgery, and I had to make some radical changes in my life. I had to make some, some big changes, and those changes um, were uh, not just uh, accepted by me because of the mandate or the fear of having another cardiac event or something happen to me. Though it didn't happen instantly, when I followed the instructions that I learned in cardiac rehab about the exercises I'm supposed to do, about the amount of walking I'm supposed to do uh, each week, each day, how I'm, how I'm supposed to do all of this, I discovered again, not initially, it took a really long time for it to take effect, it was over a year. But I started to discover a greater sense of well-being, a greater peace, less anxiety, less worry. And again, it took a long time. It took more than a year for, for that to happen. So one suggestion, and I don't, you know, we shouldn't just be focused only on the spiritual here. It's okay to be thinking about the physical. Uh, consider, if you're not already doing so, exercise. Simple things, taking a walk, doing that from time to time to relieve the burdens of your heart and mind, kind of clear your head. I suppose the uh, uh, exercise uh, uh, gurus, people who know, with, know, know these things, realize there's this thing about endorphins being released when we exercise hard or whatever. That was the thing that was lacking in me for a really long time because of the 
nerve damage that I had as a result of the surgery, and it sort of gradually repairs itself. And when I started getting the endorphins, then I was getting not just having to force myself to exercise, but was getting some, some positive feedback from my body about it. Okay, so not a bad thing to do, just a simple thing. Doesn't have to be incredibly complicated, difficult, long. Something like that can help to relieve that. It's a good time to think. It's a good time to just put everything else out of your mind. I must admit that when I walk, I usually listen to podcasts or something like that. And, but the walk is more fruitful when I don't listen to anything. I just take that time. And then it becomes sort of a time of prayer, time of reflection. Okay, and in that way, I think things, the spiritual and the physical, start to come together. They're not meant to be considered independent of each other, body and soul. I suppose that's a philosophical construct that is not really part of Christianity. St. Paul, when he spoke about, about the flesh, he was not speaking about it in with uh, that it had some separation from the person. He always considered the integral whole of the person. He always considered that this, that uh, their soul, their spirit, their body were all together and worked together. Even as we enter into eternal life and this body fails us, we are joined with a resurrected body. A body, thankfully, that doesn't have the limitations of this body. So it's okay. We should think about things as an integral whole, not so much as separate entities that need to be dealt with separately. It all works together. Okay, not meaning to get into too much philosophy here, but anyway, that's, <laughs> that's uh, where I was headed. Um, It's interesting that we do have bodies, though. We are not just spirits created by God. Jesus had a body. It's a body that he invited us to eat. Our lives are lived in these bodies. In them we eat, drink, sleep, exercise, drive cars, hundreds of other things. While we are here, to our make good, we are to make good use of these bodies. We are to take care of them and engage them in all kinds of good things. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, though I realize. There are so many good things happening, particularly within our own parish. And it, it is good to see that, and it is, it is okay to focus on those things not to the exclusion of the bad things. We need to think about those and how to take care of them. But to live, I think, a complete life, a complete Christian life, a life where Jesus is our focus and where Jesus is with us. Body and spirit are together. They have to remain together. They can't be thought of or separated. It's interesting that we... um, offer the Mass in the way that we do. We participate in the Mass. We, um, that's, you know, language from the Second Vatican Council, but probably not originating with the Second Vatican Council. We don't just attend Mass. We're not just here, like a bump on a log or something like that. Um, We are, we participate in the Mass. And the celebration of the Mass asks us not just to engage our minds in what's going on, not just to listen, but there are times when we speak. There's times when we sing. We stand, we sit, we kneel. Someone told me that was Catholic calisthenics. (laughs) Those who sing well pray twice. We engage our physical selves in a spiritual activity. 
even, like I say, even the celebration of the Mass reminds us that we are an integral whole, body and spirit, that we are together, and that if we really want to worship the Lord, we engage everything, our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our voices, our ears. We even engage our sense of taste as we take in the Eucharist. It's a genius, really, the way that Mass is celebrated. It would be a shame if all we did was came in and sat and listened for an hour or something. Probably be really boring, too. It engages us. It helps us to remain engaged in what's happening. The ultimate joining, really, of the physical and the spiritual happens right at the altar. We see, we witness, and our faith helps us to understand that bread becomes Jesus' body, a spiritual transformation. Wonderful thing happens. A great thing happens. And that's really the culmination. And that's the, really the most Im important point of the Mass. It all leads up to that. It's all a preparation for that moment. But it doesn't just end there. Then we get to engage our bodies in receiving his communion, in participating in his passion, his suffering, death, and resurrection. As we pray the prayers, as we sing the hymns, as we move. It's all this wonderful joining that happens. So make good use of this time, this time of prayer, this time of movement, this time of exercise, if you will. And when you leave, take with you the refreshment of God's graces, particularly under the form of bread that is Jesus' body. Do these spiritual exercises, recognizing that we need to be both like Martha and Mary. Please stand for our symbol of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come as travelers in a desert, placing our cares and concerns before God. For the Holy Father, the bishops, presbyters, deacons, and all the baptized who proclaim the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders and government workers who guard the dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in economic crisis, 
for the financial and spiritual support they need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For working people, for sufficient time for recreation and renewal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of our local church who help make it a place of welcome and renewal for the poor, we pray to the Lord. We offer the Mass today for Marge Turco. We pray to the Lord. Uh, may God bless and enrich each and every parish in the diocese with his choicest graces and special protection that, we, that they may be a visual, visible expression of Christ's body at work in the world. We pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the world, especially in the countries of Russia and Ukraine, that they will recognize the futility of lethal aggression and cease the destruction caused by war. We pray to the Lord. Uh, please add your own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray together now our 50th anniversary prayer, now that we have more copies of it. Heavenly Father, accept our humble prayer of praise and gratitude as we joyfully celebrate 50 years as the Diocese of Charlotte. Throughout our history, the faithful of Western North Carolina, under the watchful care of esteemed bishops and abbots, have been nurtured by your providential hand. Confident that you invite your children to implore your constant blessings, we pray that you continue to pour forth your heavenly grace upon us. With filial affection and devotion, we further ask that you look kindly upon the prayers we seek through the intercession of our venerable patroness, the most blessed Virgin Mary, who with motherly attention tends to the needs and concerns of the church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn may be found on 460, I Heard the Voice of Jesus, 460. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, our Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion hymn may be found on page 405, There is a Longing, 405. <coughs> Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to, like to ask uh, Doug and Linda Bailey to come forward. Soon, they will be celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, 
So, of course, we will give them a blessing. <laughs> Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman so that they might enter into a communion of life and love. You likewise blessed the union of Doug with Linda so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today amid the joys and struggles of their life you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And again, let's show our appreciation for their witness to us. Wonderful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn may be found on 493, Go Make a Dis Difference. We'll sing verses 2 and 3.